Have you noticed something? Every time you turn around, there's a new industry podcast to listen to. It's hard to keep up. Everyone seems to have a podcast. Here's a question. Is it time for you to create your own podcast? Perhaps with a twist, a local twist. And to talk about that, I welcome cleaning expert, John Clendenning. He's the founder and CEO of Carpet Cleaner Marketing Masters. John, do you know anything about podcasts? Yeah, I probably know a little too much about podcasts. Um, we we have our own, the Carpet Cleaner Success Podcast. I've also helped a lot of other people understand why even a local business could probably use a podcast in today's day and age. Okay, so let me set this up. We're not telling people to become rich and famous with a podcast like Joe Rogan. We're mm -hmm. not saying that. John, you're talking about local marketing. Run us through what you're thinking. Okay. So there's this lovely concept of being a key person of influence in any industry, in any marketplace. That could be globally, that could be nationally, and that could be in, you know, Idaho. You know what I mean? And, it, you know, you, you pick your small town. That could be it. it. Can you become a key person of influence? We call it in our cleaning world, the best known cleaner. How do you become the best known cleaner? Um, so Google did this study years ago. If anybody's ever read it about the zero moment of truth, they called it ZMOT. And they realized that people they have 11 interactions before they choose a brand. Finally, if you actually broke it down to where they got to that point. So 11 interactions. Um, there is another principle and I wrote it down to remember the name, but it's called the Dunbar's number. The Dunbar's number is how your brain works and you've got enough, enough slots to fit in certain amounts of people in your brain. So family, there's about five slots and like your close family. And then there's about 15 for close friends and relatives and, and this group, and it's been dealt with, with psychologists. So don't, don't want to get geeked out too much, but as cleaners or as business owners, we have to be in the Dunbar numbers. There's about 2,000 of them that we can, like people that we can kind of remember their face and their name and what they do kind of thing. There's about 2,000 all in in these numbers. If you don't end up in somebody's Dunbar numbers, um, then you know you're not you're not seen as a credible source. You're not seen as the business they the person they want to do business with. And especially in today's day and age, it's all it's all about who you are and what you know, your authority, not just, you know, again, not just the cheapest price. If you want to be a commodity business, sorry about your luck, your vans will be rusted out and you'll be leaking oil in people's driveways and you won't know how to fix the transmission or the water pump when it goes out. If you want to actually run a real business, you have to elevate your brand, even in small towns. And we, I talk about this every single day. So how do you do that? You got to get in, you got to be a, a person of influence to that person in your local marketplace around cleaning and health. Okay. So so start a podcast, focus locally. What are some topics that they could get into and what are some challenges that they would have to figure out along the way? Help them out. Yeah, we did a bit of a giant leap there from why to podcast, right? And so to, to kind of pack a little bit, um, why a podcast? Well, Everybody listens to podcasts. The number of people listening to podcasts, you know, we don't put cassette tapes in our in our car anymore and drive around. I still have them. We don't put them. We don't put CDs in anymore. We put our headphones or we put the, you know, Apple CarPlay and listen to something or whatever. Or we're just talking about before we jumped on about cutting the grass, putting your headphones in, putting the ear, you know, ear, ear covers on and listening to something. So can you create a podcast about local property? where you're interviewing the real estate agents, the interior designers, the, the roofers, the landscapers, and you're just Joe the carpet cleaner, but Joe the carpet cleaner is also doing, you know, the po property pr perfection podcast of Perth County. It's, you know, something like that. Give it a, give it a little bit of a funny, funky name and start getting that message out and get those people to share it with their audience as well. You are creating a key, becoming a key person of influence. People are going to go, Hey, I've I've heard that before that like it's a local hometown kind of thing. You can you can do anything around a topic like that. You could do it around local sports. You could do it. Think of what, you know, something you're passionate about, but something that your clientele, ideal clientele is interested in. So if you're residential, 35 to 55 year old college university educated people are your average household clientele, probably skewed more towards women who make the phone calls or 
text you about wanting the cleaning. So make it something that they would be interested in and interview the other people in your marketplace. Now, when you ask for a referral partner, hey, the real estate agent, would you like to refer some leads to me and I'll let, make sure our clients know about you? You've now, you know, the carpet store owner, the maid service, like go nuts. Now you are entering a community and you're becoming something very unique. Now, hold on, John. You're talking about marketing, but not talking about your own company. Mm-hmm. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, you're talking about building a brand around what you are and your, your and your, you know, where you stand in the marketplace. Why do you clean the way you do? Do you have a stand about cleaning for health? You could talk about, hey, that reminds me about why we decided to start cleaning for health, blah, blah, blah. So when you do these interviews, it's pretty easy. You ask them about their history, their founder story, why they got into it, any special questions. You have the same five or six questions. The conversation will always go in a totally different direction every time, just like your podcasts and, and, and videos and all this here. They, you, have, like, you have a framework, but they always go off on their own, their own leg or their own tangent. And they just, it becomes entertaining to the right audience and the right audience will find you. You don't even need to market it out a lot. You just have them share it to their audience. You share it out to your customer base and people will start sharing it around. And slowly over time, it'll go from crickets to a groundswell and you could just do one a month Although I've seen people doing it one a week. Okay, very good. What do you do with it when you record it? Because you're talking about maybe using your iPhone, maybe a couple of cheap microphones or whatever, but whatever. Yeah. You have the content. What do you do now? Uh, you can look at rss.com. They're one way to help set up a podcast. Um, there's a lot to do a YouTube. We're in a world now that you just YouTube, how to set up your podcast. Spotify um, took over a company called Anchor. where So Spotify bought them out. It will syndicate them to a bunch of different places. Fancy word for sharing it out. So there's a few steps. It might take you about an hour to an hour and a half to set up an actual podcast, get a little cover graphic created, you know, from, uh, you know, a high school kid or on one of the online tools like Fiverr or something like that. And just like, don't overthink it. Just plan to have a few people that you already know on as your first initial guest, and then just start asking around at the chamber and the BNI. You'll be surprised how many business owners would love to hop on and tell their story. And you're the one getting branded because of it.